Welcome, welcome to Concept 2 Notes. We are finally going to get into stoichiometry. So all of Concept 1, meet the mole, which is introducing you to the mole and finding molar mass, which is critical for doing stoichiometry. Now we're actually going to get into what stoichiometry is, and you're going to be able to use this term and just sound very smart to anyone you're talking to. So stoichiometry, that term, literally breaks down to mean element measure. So stoic is just a way to describe quantities in chemical reactions. So measurements of elements, you know, in chemical reactions. That's what we're doing here. So we need to do molar mass and we need to use mole ratios to do this. And a mole ratio, I introduced you to this at the end of concept one, but now let's actually really dive into it. It's just a ratio of substances in a chemical reaction that can be used as a conversion factor, which we also talked about in concept one. So for example, look at this balanced chemical reaction of the decomposition of aluminum oxide. So you have two aluminum oxides decompose into four um, moles of aluminum and three moles of oxygen gas. So it has to be balanced in order to find the mole ratio. So what we can learn from this is there are two moles of aluminum oxide for every three moles of oxygen gas that are made. So you can write that as a conversion factor. Therefore, two moles of aluminum oxide is equal to three moles of oxygen gas. This can be written like this or like this. Both of these forms are useful when we're doing our picket fence conversions. Okay, so now we're just adding another conversion factor that we can add to our you know, picket fence so that we can make these conversions in a chemical reaction. Okay, so first, let's just practice finding mole ratios for the following reaction. Okay, so we've got um, oh, I'll correct this typo before I upload, but that should be a big G. This should be mercury oxide, solid mercury oxide decomposes into liquid mercury and oxygen gas. What are all the different mole ratios that we could pull from this? Okay, well, you have two moles of mercury oxide for every two moles of mercury. You have two moles of mercury oxide for every one mole of oxygen gas. And then you can compare these two. I have two moles of mercury for every one mole of oxygen gas. So I want you to write all of those out and write the different ways you can write them so that you have just a list of practicing these. Now, when we're doing stoichiometry, there's basically four types of problems you will do. And I have created something called a mole map to help you figure out how to do that. So it, de it depends on whether you're given the mass or you're given the moles and whether you're asked to find the moles or find the mass, okay? It'll tell you what your path is. So if you are given the mass and you wanna know the mass of an unknown, you're gonna to have to walk all through this process, okay? So you'll have one, two, three steps. If you're given you know, the moles and then you wanna know some other moles, it's only a one step process, okay? So in this mole map, there's some things that'll help you. Just to convert from moles to moles, all you need is that mole ratio we just talked about from a balanced equation. But again, this has to be balanced correctly or else your mole ratio is wrong and the whole thing's wrong. So please, 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 if you need a review from last unit, unit five, chemical reactions, how to balance, do that because it's so important. Now, if you wanna go from moles to mass, either direction, you have to have the molar mass, which we learned how to calculate in concept one. So if you don't know how to find molar mass for a compound, go back and give concept one notes a listen. Okay, so now we're just going to walk through every type of problem, moles to moles, mass to moles, you know, mass to mass, that kind of thing. Okay, so first, type one, and you don't, for my purposes, I don't need you to know like type one, type three, just know how to do all of these. Okay, so first could be a type of problem where we're going from moles to moles. So I give you some moles and I wanted the moles of something else. So we're just sitting right here on our mole map. Okay, let's do an example. Consider the decomposition reaction of solid potassium chlorate decomposing into potassium chloride and oxygen gas. How many moles of potassium chlorate are needed to make 15 moles of oxygen gas? Okay, remember, don't get overwhelmed here. Let's do radar. You just read. Now let's analyze. What do we know? We know 15 moles of oxygen gas. What do we want to know? We want to know moles of potassium chlorate, so moles of KClO3. Okay, diagnose. What do we need to know to go from moles to moles? We need to know a mole ratio from the balanced equation. So if we're going from O2 to ClO3, we need to know what that mole ratio is. So what's the ratio of oxygen to potassium chlorate? Well, it's three oxygens for every two potassium chlorates. Look at those coefficients. So I know that two moles of potassium chlorate is equal to three moles of oxygen and vice versa. Now we're ready to assess and actually plug this in. Okay, so we start with what we know, 15 moles of oxygen. Draw your picket fence. All right, we always have to put the like units on opposite so they'll cancel out. So three moles of oxygen 
is equal to two moles of potassium chlorate. Is that gonna get me where I wanna go? Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Now we can just simply multiply across. So 15 times two gives me 30 over three, 30 divided by three gives me 10 moles of potassium chlorate. Okay, now I want you to practice that here. So this first one, I give you the balance equations, that's in for you. For the second one, if I don't give you the balance equation, you need to write it and balance it first. This is something we're gonna practice doing. Then you do what we just did. Okay, that's type one. Now let's move on to type two moles to grams. So I give you moles and I want to know the mass of something. So we're, it's going to be a two-step problem. We're going to have to use a mole ratio to get to moles and then use a molar mass to get from moles to mass. Okay? Let's do another example. Consider the reaction of carbon dioxide and lithium hydroxide to make lithium carbonate and water. What mass in grams of lithium carbonate, so we're looking for this, is produced if you start with five moles of carbon dioxide? Okay? What do we know? Again, you read this and you're overwhelmed, you think you're gonna start crying. Don't cry, okay? Let's radar this. What do we know? We know five moles of carbon dioxide. What do they want us to know? They want us to know what mass in grams of lithium carbonate. So we wanna know grams of lithium carbonate, okay? Diagnose, what do I need to get there? What do I need to get from moles to mass? I need a mole ratio and I need a molar mass. Okay, first the mole ratio, that's from the balanced equation which they already gave us. So now we just need to look it up. What's the mole ratio of carbon dioxide to lithium carbonate? It's one mole of carbon dioxide to one mole of lithium carbonate. Perfect. Now, I also need a molar mass. I need the molar mass of where I'm going, which is to lithium carbonate. So I'm going to need to find that molar mass of lithium carbonate. Okay, so let's do that first. Um, okay, I just moved this to another slide, so I had more room. I was running out of room down there, okay? So that's all we just did. I just moved it to another slide. So let's figure out molar mass of lithium carbonate. 2 times the molar mass of lithium, 6.94, which I looked up on the periodic table, plus 1 times the molar mass of carbon, which is 12.01, plus 3 times the molar mass of oxygen, which is 16.00. Okay, so then I just solve those, and then I add them up, and now I have my molar mass. Now I have everything I need to move forward. Okay, so remember, go back here. This is going to be a two-step problem. I'm going to have to use a molar ratio and a molar mass. So I'm going to use two conversion factors in this problem, okay? So you're gonna need a little bit bigger picket fence. So start with what we know, five moles of carbon dioxide. Now, if you're like, but I don't know where to go from here. Like we have all this information, where do I go? Remember, we're trying to cancel out units. So what do I know? I know five moles of carbon dioxide. What else do I know about moles of carbon dioxide? Well, I know that there's one mole of carbon dioxide for every one mole of lithium carbonate. Perfect, plug that in. And make sure you put that on the bottom and this on top so that those cancel out. Okay, now where do we go from here? Well, I'm trying to get to mass. Well, I have the molar mass right here. So I can put one mole of lithium carbonate for every 73.89 grams of lithium carbonate. Those will cancel out. That gets me to grams of lithium carbonate, which is exactly where I want to go. So now I just multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, and divide, and you get 369 grams of lithium carbonate, which I, you know, I reduced, not reduced, but um, why, why can I not think of the word of, like, Simplified? I don't know. I'm, it's three It's three sig figs is what I'm trying to say because I started with three sig figs. Rounding. Wow. That's what I was looking for. I rounded down to 369 because I started with three sig figs. Okay? So this is just taking it one step further. Now we have a two-step problem. Practice that here, and then let's move on to type three for the video. Okay? We're halfway there, guys. You're doing so, so great. Okay, now let's say we're going from grams to moles. So we're taking it back a step. Okay, so... I give you the mass, you wanna know the moles of something. So it's gonna be two steps, mass to moles, moles to moles. We're gonna need a molar mass, we're gonna need a mole ratio, okay? Again, let's just put in an example. All right, how many moles of oxygen gas will be produced from 50.78 grams of carbon dioxide in the following reaction? Okay, so 50.78 grams of carbon dioxide, moles of oxygen. Now, I should have started, let me go back. What do we know? We know 50.78 grams of carbon dioxide. We got that here. What do we want to know? We want to know moles of oxygen gas. Okay, what do we need to know to get there? We need to know a molar mass, and we need to know the mole ratio from the balance equation. Well, we can look up that mole ratio right now. What's the mole ratio of oxygen to carbon dioxide? Six to six. Okay, so I write it as an equivalent value as a conversion factor. I'm also going to need a molar mass. Now, you might be thinking, which one? Well, we're starting with mass, we're going to moles. So we're gonna go from the mass to moles of carbon dioxide. So we're gonna get the molar mass of carbon dioxide. Now, if you're like, well, what if I accidentally get the molar mass of oxygen? That's fine, you just did extra work. 
you'll try to plug that in and realize you can't, okay? Let's move this to a bigger slide. All right, so that's where we left off. Let's give ourselves some room. Let's find that molar mass of carbon dioxide. So again, I look up the molar mass of carbon. It's 12.01. Oxygen is 16.00, but I got times it by two because I got two in here. That gives me the molar mass of carbon dioxide being 44.01 grams per mole. Now, let's pick it fence this. All right, start with what we know. We know 50.78 grams of carbon dioxide. All right, where do we go from here? Well, what else do we know that's in grams of carbon dioxide so I can get rid of that unit? Well, I've got the molar mass. So I can put 44.01 grams of carbon dioxide here. That's the same as one mole of carbon dioxide. Those cancel out. Now I can use my mole ratio conversion factor. Six moles of carbon dioxide for every six moles of oxygen. Those cancel out. Now look, I'm left with only moles of oxygen. That's exactly what I wanted. We're just following the course of our mole map. Multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, divide, and you get 1.154 moles of oxygen. Now, four sig figs, because we started with four. Okay, now I want you to practice this. And now we just have one more to go, y'all. One more type, grams to grams. So mass to mass, this is the whole thing. I give you a mass of one thing, I want you to find the mass of another. It's just a three-step problem. We're just putting it all together. Okay, same exact stuff we've been doing, just a tiny bit longer, okay? You can do this. Let's do an example. How many grams of water can be produced from 45.00 grams of oxygen gas in the following reaction? Okay, so they gave us the balance equation, so we're ready to dive in. What do we know? That's what we always start with. Let's radar this. Analyze. What do we know? We know 45.00 grams of oxygen. What do we not know? What do we want to know? We want to know grams of water. Okay, so what are we going to need? We're gonna need some mole ratios and we're gonna need some molar masses. Okay, so what's the mole ratio first of oxygen to water? Look at your balanced equation. Five moles of oxygen for every six moles of water. Okay, so that's our conversion factor there. And then we're gonna to need to know molar masses. We're gonna to need to know the molar mass of oxygen and the molar mass of water to get from grams to moles. All right, let's put this on a bigger slide. All right, let's start by finding those molar masses. Well, the molar mass of oxygen is just two times 16.00, so that's 32.00 grams per mole. The molar mass of water is two times the molar mass of hydrogen plus one times the molar mass of oxygen. So that gives us 18.02 grams per mole. Now let's rock and roll and do a picket fence. Start with what you know, 45.00 grams of oxygen. Draw your picket fence. Where do we go from here? You're like, I'm overwhelmed. Well, find something that can cancel out that grams. Boop, right here, your molar mass. 32.00 grams of oxygen is the same as one mole of oxygen. Those will cancel. All right, now let's go moles of oxygen and water. Five moles of oxygen for every six moles of water. Those cancel out. All right. Molar mass of water. One mole of water is the same as 18.02 grams of water. Those will cancel out. Now I'm left with grams of water, which is exactly where I wanted to go. Now all you're doing is plugging it. You're, doing, you're assessing it. You're plugging in your calculator. Second to last step of radar. Multiply across the top. Multiply across the bottom. And divide. And you get 30.41 grams of water. Now again, to review this or reflect on this, I would go back and I would punch this in my calculator one more time just to make sure I did it right, because even I make mistakes on this, and make sure you get that final answer. All right, here's some practice problems on this, on this type four, and then we're just gonna do some stoic practice together as a, um, as a class just to make sure you really get this down. You guys can totally do this, I know you can, and I'm excited to watch you learn this.